So this is the Honda Hornet 2.0 and it's been one of the most awaited motorcycles of the year 2020. And ever since it came out, you guys have been asking us a lot of questions as to how this motorcycle is to ride. Well, today we finally got the motorcycle with us. So without wasting any more time, let's dive straight into what this motorcycle is all about. Let's start with the design. It carries the familiar X-shaped LED tail lamps that the older Hornet had, but other than that, the Hornet 2.0 is truly an evolution of the design. The motorcycle looks a lot more bulky and sportier than before, and more importantly, it has got the stance right. A big reason for this new, more confident stance is the fact that despite having so much going on in terms of design, graphics, and bodywork, the motorcycle is actually quite compact in dimensions. And then it has these wide tires front and back and when you couple that with the short exhaust and the high rising tank, you get the Hornet 2.0. Additionally, it gets features like LED indicators, LED headlamps, hazard lights and an all digital instrument cluster that shows everything you need to know. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how the motorcycle feels like once you're on it. First thing first, I can put both my feet firmly onto the ground and for reference, my height is 5 foot 10. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is that you have a familiar feeling when you're on the Hornet 2.0 as to what you got with the original Honda Hornet. Having said that, what I mean is that you have a very slim waist which actually makes you feel like the motorcycle is smaller than what it is. But right ahead of it, you have these humongous tank shrouds and in the cockpit view, everything is tightly, densely packed together, all of which combined makes you feel like you are on a bigger bike than what it is. Also, the fact that the key goes on top of the tank only adds to that experience. Now let's talk about how the Hornet 2.0 is to ride. The motorcycle's star attraction is the fact that it comes with these lovely looking upside down front forks which not only give better looks but add a lot of functionality to the bike as well. The Hornet is agile and is an efficient city traffic carver. And if you show it a set of long corners then the Hornet holds its line with confidence and lets you push hard till the foot pegs scrape. It is very definitely a fantastic handling motorcycle. However, the suspension is on the stiffer side for this performance, so the trade-off is that the bike feels too taut when tackling bad road conditions. And the fact that it doesn't have a lot of suspension travel at the front means it will bottom out if you take a speed breaker enthusiastically. And that's no fun, is it? Powering it is an all-new 184cc single-cylinder engine that works like a typical Honda engine, which is to say that it runs butter smooth and is very tractable. In simple words, you don't need to change gears that often and no matter which gear you are in, you will have a defined riding experience. It can do 100 km an hour all day and it sounds rather nice too. Braking duties are done by disc brakes both front and back and while they have good bite and feedback, Honda has only given a single channel ABS which means the rear can lock up. But overall, the Hornet has managed to create a different riding experience in this segment one that will be liked by those who prefer enthusiastic riding. Well, now it's time to sum up the Honda Hornet 2.0 and in short, there's nothing really wrong with it. What I think Honda has successfully managed to do is that they have moved the Hornet Bash from being a good commuter motorcycle to it being a good sporty package that you can buy in the Indian market. But coming to the buying part, you see the Hornet comes at an expensive price tag, there's no really other way to put it. And because of its price tag, despite holding its own ground and having its own unique character and identity and all of that, it competes squarely against the TVS Apache RTR 204V and the Bajaj Pulsar NS200. Now, the Apache, for example, for a slightly bit more amount of money, is giving you things like adjustable suspension, Bluetooth connectivity, slipper clutch, so on and so forth. So at that position, it makes it difficult to justify buying the Hornet 2.0 and I think Honda has missed a big opportunity in that department. But coming to the motorcycle itself, once again, there's nothing really wrong with it. 